Hello everyone and welcome back to The Letter where we are now studying some history. We found something surprising. Looking over this, I'm guessing then that uh, Charlotte put a stop to the uh, local slave trade and I'm assuming people weren't happy about that. Yeah, I'm not sure what this has to do with anything yet. We'll find oh, out. We'll find out. Apparently her time also marked more than superficial changes to the place. She moved things, changed laws, altered old customs and traditions. If they were done on a woman's whimsy, it doesn't say, but she seems capable enough for more than that. The gist of it is the town she rebuilt. It's what eventually grew to become Luxborn City, while the nearby Anselm village remained as it was, a relic of the old. A, froze, a frown swiftly forms on my face. So, why is there a need to hide this? One by one, I try to recall every lesson I've gone through, every book, paper, and journal I've read. None of those ever mentioned this. It's always the lord and the lady of the house. Their endearing children always an afterthought to those anecdotes. The one who always took her life in the end. Never someone who restored a town from the brink of collapse or brought new ideas to it. Is it because she's a woman? <sighs> that pisses me off. Granted, not everything is sunshine and rainbows. Not all aspects of her can be considered admirable. But this is history. Some parts are bound to naturally delve into unpleasant territory whether I like it or not. Witch hunts, for example, became common near the end of her life. Mmm. Oh, there's the witch hunt. Which would have been completely unremarkable and might have gone to become a mere footnote in history if it didn't involve Lady Charlotte and the very slave right. she saved. There we so, go. So, I thought that picture looked like our, um, help me chick. And this picture looks like her, too. So it sounds like she bought her, I'm assuming, or freed her, and she worked for her. Something happened, and then she's like, witch burner. Go in that direction. It caused quite a stir, enough to leave almost a week's worth of clippings. The girl was eventually burned, condemned by an entire town. At the word of Lady Charlotte alone. I mean, that was all very easy to do back then, though. But this doesn't really have anything to do with this curse, does it? Unless that woman following us and this slave are the same person. A tale of revenge. How cliche. However, with the lack of accurate photographs, it's impossible to tell. Maybe if I squint, the illustration would start resembling her. But in my mind, it doesn't work that way. It shouldn't work that way. I'll be the laughing stock of the community. Uh, this isn't going anywhere. Mentally exhausted, I take careful, a careful step away from the screen, pressing a palm to my tired eyes. The lack of ample light in this area doesn't help. A headache already threatens to form at the back of my head, yet I'm nowhere near figuring things out. This is simply too much to take in all at once. I should have asked for someone's help. No, I'm at a dead end. I start gathering everything around me and placing them back in their respective envelopes for storage. The motion is no longer new after volunteering here a number of times. I didn't make much mess anyway, considering the lack of materials available to begin with. I'll have to look somewhere else. The where remains unknown though. But just as I'm about to slip the last of the slides in, something catches my attention. My hand pauses, the microfish halfway through its protective sleeve. This is one of the few I've set aside without taking a careful look at. It seems like gossip, a gossip column at first glance, but upon closer look. I slide it back to the reader, gently turning the dials in search for the page. It takes some time, but once the image becomes clear... They must have had this drawing commissioned for this announcement. All right, Ermengarde Air announces betrothal. Okay, I don't doubt it. The details are far more intricate. Their likeness likely closer to how they might have appeared at the time. They're both recognizable this way, closer to those paintings I've seen in the mansion. Yep. However, it's the man standing beside her, Edward Godfrey, according to the article, that caught my attention previously. Her first cousin and eventually her fiance. Maybe it's the posture, the manner in which he holds himself. Or maybe it's the shape of his eyes, though I can't be too certain about that until I've gotten a better reference. Nevertheless, there is a resemblance. He looks eerily like... Luke. Yeah, you said that from the beginning. I did. I think Charlotte... Or, yeah, is that her name? Charlotte? Is that her name? The blonde that's in all yeah. the pictures? Charlotte looks like Hannah, and then Luke looks like Edward. Hmm. My head snaps up, glowering at whoever's running in the floor above. Any day, I'd march upstairs and reprimand whoever it is. This is a library, for heaven's it. sake. It's gonna be the ghost. But now isn't the time. I've got what I need. Without wasting another minute, I hit the machine's print button for a copy of the page, while my other hand moves to put everything back into storage. A ragged exhale slips from me. 
Relief, perhaps? Or maybe this is already exhaustion. Regardless, soon I'm closing my eyes as I wait for the printer to finish. If only to stave off a headache building up from everything. Don't sing that song! Sometimes I've even begun humming the same song again. For comfort. It's not comforting. No. Nightmarish. Despite my doubts about this, despite all the tension in my shoulders, this may be a small find, but at least I can start somewhere. We can start somewhere. There's a way out of this. I know it. The printer sputters to a halt. However, its sound isn't what makes me snap my eyes open. Oh. Uh, why? Alright, what's our quick time event here? A feeling, a chilly brush of Rhythm air behind game. my neck. Oh god. Sing with the creepy music. Brief enough for something sickening to suddenly lodge itself in my throat while I take in my surroundings. It's that suffocating sensation again, creeping to every part of me, crawling under my skin, draining me little by little of any strength from the de that day in the mansion, from that brief moment at the school. Without delay, I grab the papers and make a quick beeline for the door, but it doesn't matter. Jeez. My whole body freezes. What are you doing? Oh god, it sounds like Kylie. I hold my breath, not daring to make any noise. For a little while, only the sound of papers crumpling under my grasp fills the room. The excitement from earlier gone instantly, replaced by a cold sleeping dread spreading throughout my limbs. But more than the fear is the anger. It pains me to hear her using my own student's voice against me, and more than once I believed it was really her. She has no right. Why don't you play with me? Although she hasn't made a move, if there isn't a wall behind me, I'll probably take a step back. Anything to put distance between us, no matter how small, as long as I'm out of her reach. But I steal myself, because if I do fall back, turn away from her, I'll be left with no way out. I am not dying here. You think you scam me? Miss Pink, don't be so rude. I'm waiting. Uh, I'm not afraid of you, you spook! This, this is one Scotswoman. You aren't getting into an early grave without you know. a fight! <laughs> Oh. Why would you do that? I expected she'll lunge. Prove to me what a monster she is. Oh, she's a smile. Instead, all she gives me is a smile, twisted and gnarled. It's as if time has crawled to a stop at the sight of it. A split-second decision. And before I know it, my body shifts. Eyes closing in anticipation, hand grabbing whatever solid enough on the nearby table and hurling it at her. I don't bother looking if whatever I threw hit its mark. I run. As fast as my legs can carry me, despite my heart threatening to burst out of my chest. But in this maze of bookshelves with the whole place almost void of people. Oh god. Uh. Uh. Um. Um. Oh uh, no. Door? Like get the hell out of here? Yeah, because I feel like running, well, because we're on the second floor, right? No, I think we're on the main floor. There's an upstairs above us because remember she said someone was running upstairs above her. Oh, that's right. Okay. Door? It's head for the I'm gonna get us killed. I'm Probably. Sorry. If there's one, it is if there is one, it is out of this room, out of this place, as far away as anyone can get from her. I can't think about the rest of what I can do after I'm outside when there are other people I can ask for help, when she's not chasing after me like this. There's no hesitation in my step as I race for the restricted section's floor door. Head downstairs and barrel straight for the library's exit. Towards safety and desperate bid for my life, library rules be damned. I can no longer hear her behind me, but I'm not taking any chances. A breath almost escapes me as I near the door. A little more- oh crap. crap. When out of nowhere, a library cart careens from a blind corner and slams into my side. Down she goes. <laughs> My back hits the floor with a hard thud, the impact completely knocking the breath out of me. The copper tang of blood gradually spreads over my tongue as I fight to get my bearings back. I force myself to move with an excruciating pain coursing through my limbs. The exit's almost there, if only I can, but there's no moment's respite. The next thing I know, there's a heavy weight atop me and the cold digits slide around my neck, tight like a vice, pressing, closing in, leaving me gasping for air. Though my blur through my blurred vision, I can only make out the hateful gleam and the spite in her eyes as she looms over my body and her grip on my throat grows tighter. Desperation kicks in. My nails dig into her wrists as I struggle against her firm grip, trying to pry her fingers away. Get her in the crotch! Go! Let me go! 
Up here you go. Keep the slider and the green pipe by moving the mouse in the arrow's directions. Oh, I see. I don't think twice. My limbs are moving on their own before what I did could fully register in my brain and my lungs could recover. I hate that, like, how loud this music is compared to every other. Th it's uh, supposed to bring the mood. I guess. <laughs> Behind me, she lets out a, sh a cry, sharp, loud, and thunderous against the empty walls of the library. But the fear her wails bring compares nothing to the relief washing over me when I finally make it out. My knees buckle as soon as my feet hit the pavement. It's surface cold and hard against my skin. I've only been in there for a few hours, about one or two probably. I don't know anymore. It feels like an eternity all the same. My breathing hasn't slowed yet, and I don't expect it to after going through that. I probably look the most undignified creature on a Sunday morning right now. Out of breath, disheveled, slumped here with a bloodied lip and all. But at present, I simply can't bring myself to care, even when a few passers-by start giving me a strange look. Stare at me all you want. I don't give a single shit. I'm alive. I'm safe. This isn't the end yet, but I am safe. And inside my bag is something that could get us out of this mess. Nothing definite yet. I don't want to get my hopes up, but it's still something. If Isabella is here, I'm sure she'll feel the same. She'll even be the first one who will put her faith on it. Wherever this will lead us to is a victory on its own. Now all that's left is to find the others, the rest of us trapped in this bloody nightmare. Right on cue, as if in answer to my previous thought, my mobile phone lets out a beep. I pick it up, simply hoping it'll be one of them. Only, it's a voicemail that greets me. From Ashton. There's a pang of disappointment, of course, but it brings some reassurance that nothing's happened to at least one of them. Hey, Becca, call me back when you're free. We need to talk. ASAP. He ends it right there, the message less than a minute long. Kurt and gives nothing away. I let it use my worries regardless and do as he asks, because this too is another triumph for us. One less thing to worry about. Dut, 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 dut. There we go. Oh, we're Ashton now. Wow, I didn't, I didn't think that was gonna end. I right there. did. It always ends with like some quick time event or some like trapped in a basement or something, getting strangled yeah. to death. Oh wow, this started us on the twenty eighth. We're like pretty far along. This is the day of the party, I believe. Okay, well, which I think makes sense because you kind of followed Ash through the whole thing. But the only thing I wanted to see was the beginning to find out why he's investigating Luke and Hana. Yeah, I was hoping we would have the thing at the uh, beginning of uh, like when he's in the police station and yeah. Zach goes to visit him. That would have been good. Yeah, okay, so this is the day of the party. Marianne's gone missing. Isabella wasn't there. Zach was there. Becca was there. That was awesome. Crazy drunk pregnant people were there. <laughs> hey, look, we've got a gun. Oh, that's All right. pretty cool. I like our relationship with Luke. <laughs> I just, yeah. I was like, at first I saw Marianne, I'm like, oh, and Hannah, I'm like, that's not great. And I saw that one, I'm like, oh, that's worse. Well, he's investigating Hana and Luke, so I expected it to be low. Yeah. So. All right. Parties have never really been my thing. They're always such a hassle and take so much time off my day. Prior plans and commitments canceled, all for the sake of playing along with others. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. I hated them even as a child. Please, make yourselves at home. Mom often insisted. Hmm? Parties are fun if they're a fun party. If it's like a formal family thing like this, where it's like, oh, get you all dressed up for a stuffy dinner. Yeah, forget those. Not so that. She'd slick my hair back, put me in one of those stuffy dinner jackets, and if there were any children around, urged me to make friends. Ugh. <laughs> Never mind how utterly loud or tedious it was. It was all for the sake of keeping up appearances. To some extent, lies have already surrounded me, long before I've chosen what I wanted to do with my life. Luckily, there were easy ways to tune out every, tune everything out, and much to my mom's frustration, I always managed to sneak my CD player along. I kept this to myself. Familiar. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I it kept. It was Game Boy. Uh, for me, it was the both. Like I would. I don't go think I, I used the CD mostly in the car, but if when we went to a relatives' house and I didn't want to deal with anyone, it was either my Game Boy and then as progressed the handheld systems as we went along. Yeah, for me it was it was both. I would uh, you know, just be have my had my have had my headphones on and my Game Boy in front of me. Dead to the world, man. 
I kept to myself and to my music, had my own little world. Until I learned to observe. It's a simple matter of awareness, really. And for someone with keen eyes, a skewed necktie, or a simple flick of the wrist alone could tell volumes about a person. I still don't like parties. Especially ones as big and fancy as the Wright's housewarming. However, when there's actual reason to go to them, I figure they're not too bad. Be careful with Shirley, alright? Forgot about his car's name is <laughs> Shirley. Besides, like it or not, it's all part of the job. I'm here on a mission. One that has the name Luke Wright plastered all over it. You'd think the man would want to remain inconspicuous after his name was linked to several high-profile high profile oh. crimes across Luxborn. You see the mob of whatever Luxborn is? Seen the mob? Maybe. Granted, most of it could has most of it have gone cold over the years, having stagnated without any lead or evidence, but that still doesn't make him any less suspect. Yet here he is throwing a party in his own yet backyard. Although, having observed the man this past year, I'm not even shocked. He craves it, the damn spotlight. Constantly yearns for attention like a neglected puppy. It doesn't take a genius to figure out why he's nowhere to be found in his own party. But that's not the problem here. What pisses me off is how far his reach extends, how close he has creeped into the lives of the people I care about. Again. Like a stubborn itch you couldn't be rid of. First Professor Clark. And there's Isabella. I also spotted Z-Man here a while ago, and now... Now there's also Rebecca. Apparently. Ashton? Becca? What are you doing here? I was... invited. Really? I had no idea you were friends with the host. That explains things, and makes this difficult all the same. As if getting a contact among the staff to sneak a name into the guest list isn't hard enough. Ooh, did you bribe Johannes? <laughs> what did you give him? Some kind of good German beer? Makes sense. Bratwurst? The guy almost did- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the guy almost ditched me last night and might have placed another set back on my invest- Placed another setback on my investigation if it wasn't for my generous tip. Then here comes Rebecca, another person to mind. Well, it's my parents, actually. But that's beside so the I point. So I wonder if uh, Rebecca had gotten in contact with the. Uh, oh, that was the business Zach had the night before that where uh, we ditched him as Rebecca. Remember, we had the option oh, to go hang out with Ashton yeah. or hang out with Luke and we Kylie. Hug out with Crazy bratwurst boy. Yeah, I did, did not get what I expected out of that. No, that was disappointing. But we did get to watch her flip her lid at him again. Which yeah, that, kind was, of that was kind of funny. What are you doing here? You hate Fact. parties. Fact. I still do. I'm just here on behalf of a friend. A necessary lie. I can't bring my own friends into this any further than what they found themselves in. Because if Luke Wright so much as harms a hair on either Zach's or Rebecca's heads, there will be hell to pay. Worrying about Isabella's brief dealings with him is stressing in itself already. I doubt he'll attempt anything in front of other people, though. It would tarnish his glorious reputation, and he values appearances more than anything. That doesn't necessarily mean he isn't capable of it. More than, in fact. And on the off chance he does something, I wouldn't be responsible for my actions. That's, uh, rare. Do you have someone with you, then? Nope, just me. I won't be staying long. Oh, well, if that's the case, maybe you and I can... For Zach's and Rebecca's sakes, however, I really hope this will simply be another housewarming. Even though something tells me it's anything but. Call it a detective's intuition or whatever. When Luke Wright's involved, nothing good has ever come out of it. I can't let my guard down here. Even more so when a familiar car slows to a stop and out comes. Chief? Oh, that's the chief! That's the I didn't put two and two together! Oh, Holy I didn't either. Shit. I feel dumb because, yep, that explains so much. Mmm, that's why he's being pulled off the case. Mm-hmm. He's good friends with the rights. My presence here might be odd at best, but I have an excuse, one that this man handed to me himself a year ago, along with a heavy dose of flattery for the newly promoted detective inspector. Can't exactly say the same for my good old boss, can I? Although to see him here chatting it up with Luxborn's rich and famous isn't such a big surprise in itself, no disrespect meant, but the guy is obviously a social climber. What is surprising is the fact that he seems all too eager to mingle with a person of interest's wife. Just what the hell is he doing here? Ashton, what's- Sorry, Becca, I- I need to- There's something I need to check for a bit. I'll talk to you later. Do you have a ride home? No, I had to take a cab here. My car wouldn't stop this afternoon. But, but what about- 
the shit is going on here? I told you to get that old thing checked before, didn't I? You can head back with me after this. Anyway, I gotta go. See ya. Be careful, okay? Hey, be careful! About what exactly? I don't want to draw attention to myself either. At least not until he's given me a proper reason to spoil his little party. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Husband still missing, I see. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle, Lee. The doctors again. I just love how polite they are. <laughs> oh, what? your wonderful husband's not here. Oh, your dashing wife's not here. <laughs> They're frolicking in the gardens. Probably. Ah, <laughs> uh, for now the best I can do is wait and remain inconspicuous, especially with Chief here, whose motives are dubious at best. If it means having to pretend I don't know Zack and Rebecca or forcing myself to rub elbows with people I barely know, let alone like, then so be it. I can't involve anyone. Wandering is out of the question as well when there are guards in civvies stationed here and there. Sure, getting past them is something I could do with ease, but I'd rather not right now, when I'm one of the few snooping and roaming about. It'd be best to try and do so once there's a crowd of people. And if their interior designer's drunken claims are to be believed... Yes, well... What about Luke? Should we file a missing persons report now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? He's around. <laughs> you know, I can tell if someone's bluffing. It'll all come down to how well, how well I'll play my cards tonight. With a good hand, this party is going to give me the breakthrough I need to crack Luke right, or something to prove my suspicions wrong. Maybe find out what kind of game my boss is also playing. And we'll just have to find out what game he's playing in the next episode. Ooh, this right. is getting interesting now. Yeah, I'm kind of glad that we, uh, Got through Rebecca's chapter, yeah. and I'm really happy about where they dumped us mm -hmm. uh, for to start I feel like Ashton. There's so many good things we could see right now. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I yeah. think they started this chapter off right. It's funny where I was like, you know what? I wasn't excited about Marianne's chapter, and then it like was really good. So I was kind of hoping Rebecca was gonna be that. I just feel like it was a lot of like background noise. Yeah, it was like a lot of exposition. It was a lot of like how she's feeling. A lot of and which didn't really seem necessary. I'm hoping that it. Like somewhere in the future, it's like oh, we get something that's out of it. Why. Yeah, yeah, that's why we did that. So, yeah. but anyways, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.